In this video I'll cover some of the main ways to get guns in Rust. A primary focus of most if not all Rust players is to progress from the primitive stages early wipe to a point where you're combat ready and equipped with guns. However getting hold of guns often means a high amount of risk through combat with other players or going to high combat areas. Often this can lead to some players hitting a brick wall of progress. Those around them will have guns before they do and this can halt progress in all areas of their wipe, leaving them unsure what they should be doing next to get guns. Therefore, it's fundamental that all players have a good understanding of the different ways that at any point of their wipe, they can specifically go out and get weapons to defend themselves and continue progressing through their wipe. Let's get started. Guns can be found in any of the boxes that you find around the map. Normal crates that you find along the road contain revies, water pipes and double barrel shotguns, making them a quick and easy way to get a gun in your hand. You can find the same brown crates on the C2, with the added bonus of sunken chests also giving the chance of providing you with weapons. The C is always a good option for solos and duos. To take this further, head to any of the various monuments around the map to find both normal crates and green crates. Heading to blue puzzle room monuments like train yard, airfield, water treatment and power plant will all give you a high density of green crates which hold a further improved set of tier 2 weapons. SARS, Tommies, Customs, Pistols and Shotguns can all be found in these crates. Then there are the Elite Crates, which can provide you a chance to get your hands on AKs and MP5s and other Tier 3, 2 and 1 weaponry. As you can see, making it your starting mission to gear up with primitive weapons and head out collecting green, blue and red keycards and in turn using them to loot monuments is an effective way to get weapons. And only a few runs at most should give you some sort of blueprintable weapon to learn and take with you on future runs. If you choose military tunnels or the giant excavator as your monument, you can also benefit from the roaming scientists that do have various chances of dropping weapons. Another great opportunity that comes with getting into the good habits of looting the larger monuments to get guns is that they also have the chance for the Chinook to drop the lock crate. These are the same lock crates available each of the oil rigs and three available on cargo. Simply waiting 15 minutes after being activated will be an easy way to get weapons. However, if you haven't found a weapon up until this point, you have an uphill battle ahead where other players from around the map will see the crate on their map and will most likely be heading over to get some of the loot. You will need to defend this with whichever weapons you currently have. Always be sure to keep an eye out and listen out for airdrops. They recently received a buff that is guaranteed that they will have a gun inside of them. So if you really came here for a 100% foolproof method of how to get guns, then this is probably the closest to that. However, as you can expect, competition here is high as well, and there will most likely be other players going for the same guns as you. Bradley is also worth a weird mention here, as it's still viable to destroy Bradley early on in the wipe with F1 grenades purchasable from Bandit Camp. Although, as we'll discuss later, this might be a bit of an irrelevant use of scrap in a video about getting guns. With all I've said so far, it's worth mentioning that some players will no doubt find this whole process of going to high risk areas daunting. Depending on the server they're on, these activities will be impossible to them due to other more advanced players controlling certain parts of the map or monuments. So while I've started with some of the go-to methods of getting guns in Rust, these options may begin running out during a wipe, which is exactly what causes prim locking. So let's now look at some slightly less risky ways of getting guns. Tech trees were a recent and great addition to the game, working alongside the previous methods of having to find items to take back to the base and blueprinting them now allowing players to use their scrap to grind their way through their tech trees found in the workbenches, purchasing more advanced weapons, ammo, attachments and gear as you go further down the trees. You can utilise a whole range of ways to obtain scrap, farming the sea, roads, scrapping vehicles at junkyard, recycling, running farms or selling items to bandit camp and other players, as well as a great deal more. All of this can work towards you minding your own business and gearing up with tier 3 weapons simply by efficiently utilising the methods of obtaining scrap. I do have a whole video on the various ways to get scrap, so be sure to check that out too. It is worth saying here that when working through the tech trees, you'll often find yourself spending scrap on items that given the choice you will probably wait until later to learn. While this does make the process expensive, it's reassuring knowing that the progress towards key wipe items can be visibly seen. It's a great way to focus the efforts of your wipe, keeping track of how much more scrap you need for that day one SAR and garage door. It's also a new and exciting shift away from scrap only being able to be used to purchase one of the few available guns from gun vendors. This moves us on to my next method of obtaining weapons in Rust, and that's just buying them. Using scrap, you can buy guns from both Bandicamp and Outpost. Outpost providing you with blueprintable revies and DBs, 
and Bandicamp, while having a more powerful arsenal, can only provide you with the following unlearnable weapons. The LR, the M92, the M39 and the Spash Shotgun. The pistols and the shotguns make a great early white purchase and will certainly allow you to progress quickly onto tier 2 and 3 weapons. Guns like the LR and the M39 are high tier weapons and when purchased can take you from primitive to being powerfully enough geared to take on most fights. So saving up your scrap for the purpose of buying your first guns of the wipe is a method that a lot of players use and a method that you'll see many stick to wipe after wipe. To add to this, with the fact that you can buy F1 grenades from Vandekamp, you have the option to obtain the GP by recycling them that you need to craft pistol ammo for your newly purchased weapons. Meaning you can arrive at the safe zone with just scrap and leave with a pistol and a stack of ammo before you even have a base down. Another way of getting guns comes in the form of buying them off other players. Although I tend to avoid assumptions around servers that people play on, a lot of servers will see an entire economy of weapons being sold through the vending machines. With a recent addition of drones, this means that people can gather some resources on their way to Bandit Camp and make a purchase. Items like Sulphur Ore, Scrap, Metal, Cloth, Low Grade and HQM can all make good currencies for this, often leading players to some very quick and cheap deals for getting their hands on guns. Next up to cover is another big one, taking guns from other players. Primitive fights can be loads of fun, especially when you come out on top against someone who already has a gun. Using bows, eokers, nail guns or melee weapons can be a great but difficult way to make plays against other players, but as a positive, these kits are cheap enough to take on those gambles with no real loss. Keeping your eye out for those tier 2 hazzy boys making smart decisions and good plays can lead to some quick guns and shaky hands. It's definitely worth knowing which weapons are instantly craftable and becoming somewhat proficient with them. The enormous challenge of being the last one in the area to have guns is a tough position to be in, but with some practice and refined bow skills you will actively learn to enjoy seeking out those big plays to level up. That's when a successful play can lead to some rapid snowballing and white progression. After all, you should already be gearing up in the best primitive gear you can afford to be in and hitting up the roads, monuments and other player populated areas of the map anyway in your pursuit for guns. So, if you're already in an area where you're likely to get into a fight, make sure you go all out to win it and have a gun land in your lap that way. And let's not lie either, by far the most fun method of getting guns. Another notable mention here is finding loot in decaying bases. Depending again on the wipe that you have, hopping through the decaying remnants of a base can lead to some enormous hauls. Boxes full of guns and ammo can be found seconds after spawning on the beach. The same can extend to those opportunities to carry out eco raids on more geared neighbours. There are so many different routes to getting guns, so if you have any tips from your own experience, please share them in the comments below. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to like it and please consider subscribing. I'm only just getting started and every sub means a lot. Thanks so much for watching.